Hey guys, it's Tooster5000. Got the uh, 680 Cub Cadet here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your Brindley plow and uh, just kind of go over some things here. Um, I've only actually plowed a garden once with my uh, 682. If you go back at my videos, you'll see that in there. Um, this is the 680. It's the exact same tractor. Uh, the only difference is, is the 12 horse Kohler in it and not the uh, 17 twin in it. Um, I got some front weights mounted on the front of this here. Made a weight bracket. Um, pretty simple weight bracket, really. It's, uh, I think it's two inch flat steel, quarter inch thick. Um, I actually welded on a, an inch and a half piece on top of it because I didn't have enough height out of the uh, the original one I had on it. Um, it was just two inch all around. And uh, I've got uh, roughly 50 or 60 pounds right in front here. Um, them, those two little weights are at least 25 pounds, but I have not measured them. Um, over here, <clears throat> we got the tractor jacked up on two pieces of six by six. This is how you get your simulated furrow uh, depth to uh, get your plow set up right. Um, the six by six is measured five and a half inches, which is about the maximum depth of this 10 inch plow. And I'll show you, there's a 10 inch plow. So what you wanna do is take your tape measure. You're gonna wanna measure from right here and you're gonna just make it, you know, an invisible line here, right over to here. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, figure out the triangle here. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna take your tape measure and lay it down and then figure out, um, that's how you figure out your plow. And uh, looking at this one, this is a 10 inch plow. And normally you're cutting half of the char, so if the char is a 10 inch char or plow, um, you're gonna be cutting about five inches. That's about your maximum depth that you want. Um, so if we're gonna be cutting, you know, five inches, uh, maybe you could probably do six inches. This might be a little too much. A 12 inch plow would be six inches and the eight inch plow would be four. Um, that's your max, you know, you can do a minimum. You can do obviously a lot less than that, depending on how, uh, how deep you have your whole setup to go. Um, you got the handle right on top of this that you can turn it one way or the other. You can you can sink the front of the char in more or less and you get your skid on the back there. And uh, you can adjust it all that way as well. Um, at the moment, I have it adjusted exactly how they want you to for your initial setup. They want about an inch off the ground once the front is touching so uh, right now we're about an inch maybe a little bit more than an inch um, so once that's good uh, next thing you got to do let me put you in a tripod here we're gonna go down a little bit here Next thing you gotta do is uh, you gotta take a tape measure and you gotta measure your distance between your rear tires. Now I did not do this the other time before I plowed and figure out what you got. I've got about 18 and a half inches, 18 inches right around there. Um, according to the manual, if you have 19 inches or less, you should have your plow set up exactly the way I have it. Um, you take your yoke here, and I had this on the other way around because I figured that was the right way. But uh, I've actually got to, you know, I had to unbolt it, turn it around, and I've got to actually put my pin in the very first hole. Um, if you were to put it back on the the yoke on the other way, and then put it back on i believe the plow is going to be tipped a little bit more than it is uh, because right now it is about as flat as it can get on the floor as far as the char goes 
And before, before I flipped the yoke, it was pointed up in the air, and uh, I don't think it was going to be cutting nearly as good. Um, so it, it does pay to read the manual before you set this up. Um, if you type it in online, just do like Brindley Garden Plow Manual. I'm sure you'll be able to find it or go to the Brindley website and you should be able to find that right there. But uh, anyway, so after you get your um, distance between your tires figured out, like I said, mine's under 19 inches. Uh, 16 to 19 inches is what they recommend. This setup right here with the yoke and so on. I actually found my old draft plate and I had to put it on here just because the plow would be going all over the place. Um, if you are over 19 inches wide and I think, believe it's up to 21 or so, you would take this yoke, flip it around and put it in the middle hole after this is flipped around and then the yoke will be on your left side. Um, right now it's on the right side. And then uh, that's how you would set it up that way if you, you're over 19 inches between your tires. Um, and then if you're over, I think it's 23 inches, you're going to be putting your pin all the way over in the furthest hole with the yoke going to the left side of your adapter. And uh, that all has to do with setting it up to get the plow to cut when it's in between. Or so on, and I'm not really sure. You'll have to read the manual a little bit to figure that out. But uh, anyways, for my setup right now, this is where I want to be. Um, so just like it is, you got to have an inch off over here, and then uh, have your yoke all set up just like it is. Um, get your tractor up on some blocks, front and rear tires. Um, I know a lot of people probably just do the rear tire to get your uh, offset here. But you do have to do the front tire because it's all has to do with getting everything, you know, set up right. Um, and in the pinch, you could really just do it on the flat ground or uh, just kind of pick a spot and start from there and then go from there. But uh, I was having issues plowing with the 682, so that's why I'm kind of going over this on the 680 uh, for when I actually try this plow out. Um, which I'm not sure when, but sometime here. And uh, also they recommend at least 50 pounds on the right side, which would be this side as being a furrow. And they want, at I think it was a minimum of 100 pounds on the uphill side. So at the moment, I've only got 25 pounds on each wheel. Um, that's actually not enough. But on the 682, it, it didn't do too bad the way it was. So uh, I... Probably will see if I can source out another set of weights or something for a set of weights anyway. But uh, anyway, I um, figured I'd just show you guys that. And uh, I think I've already gone through some videos on the Brinley adapter. Um, this adapter I got on eBay from a guy. He makes them. It uh, seems really good quality. Um, the only thing you have to do is, you know, either buy pins or make your own pins. I just use bolts, uh, grade 5 bolts, work pretty good. Um, and another thing you have to do is figure out your setup as far as lifting. Um, I've got the 82 series rear lift on this, which I can show you guys. Here's the uh, rock shaft here. And then the, uh, I know I've sh probably showed you guys all of that. Um, you can see the lift bar going right through the frame. On this side we have the spring assist. Uh, pretty beefy spring. It uh, goes all the way through with a rod and connects to the uh, implement lift. And uh, it makes a big difference lifting the plow up and down. If you did not have that, I believe you won't be able to pick up the plow. Or if you can, it's not going to be that easy. Um, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate that for you guys. The uh, not really sure what the Brindley plow weighs. Um, it's probably 40, 50 pounds, somewhere around there roughly. Yeah, but it's also hanging out uh, two feet or so. Plus you have your Brindley adapter as well. So uh, from the tip of the Brindley adapter 
after the end of the plow, you're talking 40 inches. Um, and when that spring is just adjusted just right, it lifts pretty easily. And that's why you put on a spring assist as, as far as a manual uh, lift track it goes. With the hydraulics, it doesn't matter. Um, you just need a way to pick the plow up and down. And you could even make a homemade setup, really. But uh, it works pretty good. Putting it down, you actually you just need to push the button and it'll go right down without much trouble at all. So. Um. The spring really helps about half halfway up on the handle and uh, all the way up. I believe if the this handle had the float, you could really just pick the plow up and it should stay without uh, any effort. Um, so anyway, like I said, it lifts pretty easy. If you're on the track, you can get a little bit more leverage, um, but that's all the way up. If it was on the ground, it's probably only up, uh, probably only about five inches or so. It's not that high. Um, if you want to adjust that, your float lift straps, which is what these are because they have the long slots in them, you can um, unpin them and pin them up higher <clears throat> or lower. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pin them on the lowest setting and show you guys the difference. on the second hole up. If we move it to the bottom hole, That's on the very bottom hole now. And we'll show you the difference. And you can see how much difference one hole makes. Um, it's probably actually quite a few inches looking at it. <clears throat> but uh, if you can't get low enough depth, that's what you're going to have to do. Or if you want the height, uh, you're going to have to unpin it and pin it back. But uh, for what I was doing, um, the second hole up was working fine. I have not used the plow yet, so it's either going to be the second hole or the first hole for now. But uh, I believe by doing your initial setup just like this, <clears throat> that's your, what you're going to want. You're going to want like the happy medium like I mentioned. Um, you want to want the height so you can move without hooking other things, but you want the depth as well. Um, so it's all trial and error. If uh, I had this set up like it is now, I believe it'll go in further than I want it to be. Which, you don't want to go too deep. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that's about how it goes. Um, I'd like to do a video of the spring assist on and the spring assist off. But you can kind of take my word for it um, if you guys want to put a rear lift on one of your tractors and lift implements up and not kill yourself you're going to want the spring assist or uh, maybe buy hydraulics or a uh, electric actuator that's a <clears throat> something else that's come out that you could also use uh, that would probably be the cheapest route and then you can make your own homemade uh, rear lift, lift set up and only have to run a couple wires instead of running the bars and all the linkage um, but this is the old school method. This is the original method as far as, uh, this goes for the tractor. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and, uh, my information. And, uh, we'll see what happens if I ever get to use this thing. And, uh, and if I ever get some decals here. <laughs> so... Alright guys, well, good information, and uh, hope somebody uses it. If not, oh well, not a big deal. Or if uh, somebody wants to comment on the video of something I missed or didn't 
pronounced right, let me know, and uh, it'll help others as it goes too. So, all right, guys, we'll see you later.